Hey folks, it's Fritgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Alps Panorama at the Northern Sea here in Farming Simulator 19. I believe that uh, course play no longer has crop destruction built into it. It used to have crop destruction built into it, but they've now gotten rid of that bit, so that shouldn't be a problem anymore. So we're just coming up with 99%. It's slowing down just to pick up the last of the grain, uh, the last of the crop. And I noticed that it hasn't filled it up completely. It's only filled it up part way. And I noticed it is going in a straight line. But it is traveling. It hasn't stopped and said, dude, I'm full. I can't go any further. It hasn't stopped and said, dude, where's my car? Nothing like that. <laughs> Nothing like that. It's going in a straight line over to the point over here. And this is what I was told is that the reason it didn't work last time is because I have the start and finish points of the tip course inside the field boundary. And you need to have those start and finish points outside of the field boundary. If you have them outside the field boundary, it should work. So at the moment, it's working. It's actually going into the next course and it's going through and then it's following those. And you know, I'm actually going to turn off those bits there so we no longer need to have them with us we can just watch him going on round two combined courses it says at the bottom right there so it's following that up through there it should if all has gone well come up to this point here it's slowing down here it's definitely now when i was recording i did stop there and i did reverse a little bit so i don't know if it's actually going to do that bit it's not driving onto the machine at all there in any way, shape, or form. That's good. And it stopped its reach and tip trigger. Tip trigger reached right there. It's emptying it all out, which is brilliant. This is absolutely fantastic. It's actually working. We've got it working. Okay. And I felt this same sort of euphoria when I got it working in FS17. I got course play working. And it's great. And I do love to get the thing working. And I like to be able to do it. However... Even though I've now got it working, um, and a lot of you have helped out with this, a lot of you have given advice and so on, I do still prefer to use hired help, uh, standard hired help alongside um, AI vehicle extension. That is my preference. Even though I've got this working, and I've now got this fully automated, still my preference is to go for the other one. Um, and I, I don't think that's going to change. I mean, yeah, this, this is absolutely great. It is fantastic that I've got this automated now. And I know that there are a lot of you that will also be pleased to see that I've got this automated because there's a lot of you that wanted me to be able to do this and wanted me to have this properly automated. One thing I think that we will do is we're going to go into our settings right here and I'm going to change that one up to... I think we'll go 12k. Field speed is... Actually, let's go 15k for the corners. I don't want to go too fast, but also don't want to go ridiculously slow. So we'll try that with 15k on there and see how that is. It's 24k just traveling across the field, going back to where it left off. But now it should do 15k going around corners. Uh, the only downside to that is going across those rough patches right up there. It is going to make it bounce around an awful lot like that. But it seems to be all right. And it's going to come into there. Come on through. And it's picking right back up where it left off. And now we're doing 15k as we go around the corners, which is a bit more of a respectable speed, I think. It's not going too slow. I don't want it to go the flat out field speed going around those corners. But that is working exactly as we want. We want it to be able to do all of this, to go through, pick everything up, and just keep ticking along quite nicely so we can leave that one working there and we can go off to some of these other things first up i'm going to go and put this one well i'm not going to put it away in the shed we can do that when we've got other things going can't we i just want to shove it out the way that's all just go and dump you over there and you know what? i'm not even going to bother with that one we will tidy that one we clean that one up um another time we're not going to worry about it right now at the moment I haven't seen an update come through. Oops, no, I want to leave that one there. I haven't seen an update come through for the class DLC yet. Apparently, there will be... An, I mean, they may have actually already been um, published. I just missed it. Um, there is news that the class DLC will have an update which will include a fix to the width of the class baler. Now... 
personally, and I know that I'm not alone in this, I'm hoping that they will adjust the pickup width to the class baler to be the same as this one here. That's what I would really like, is for it to be the same as this one right here. Now, I got 6370 on hay on here. So what I'd like to do, just to unfold that baler, is I just want to pick up a couple of these little bits of hay that we got around here, just to see if we can make up another bale. All right, one more bale would be pretty good. If I can just go around and gather a few bits here. I don't think that we're going to be able to, but there's quite a lot of corners over on the small field. And that's kind of what I'm thinking, is we might be able to get just a little bit out of some of that. So I'll go whizzing down over here. See, it's already gone up to 83% just on those little bits. And I'll bring that round there. It's 85%. See, it's, I'm not using... There's not a great deal going into it. And these corners over here have got quite a bit of material on the ground. So this is why I'm thinking we ought to be able to at least start another bale. I'm... Yeah, it, it's, it's kind of cheaty, really. But... I suppose, actually, no, we won't start another bale because that is absolutely cheating because uh, we would then use our whole load of straw to finish off that bale. So what we'll do instead is we will only go long enough to make... Actually, this isn't even hay down here, is it? This is grass, and if we start a new bale, it's just going to come out as grass. So let's not do any more of that. We've got the outside rounds on the course right here, and this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to use the course play to do the outside rounds on this one here. So we're going to go in there, and I'm going to go with manage courses in here. This field, we've got field 7 is classed as. It's field 7 rake, so I'm going to load that course there like that. Now, I can just drive course, start course at nearest waypoint is what I'm going to do. It needs to be on the field work one. Uh, course generation, I could change. No, I'm not going to change anything on that. I'm just going to go drive course, but start at the nearest waypoint. Because what I'd like to do, yes, it's going to end up leaving some little bits where it's really wide. And unfortunately, there's not a lot that we can do about that besides go round it twice. Like, if I was to go and get a... Um, get the rake and go around it again and do that, then that would pick up most of it. I mean, the, the, the width of the baler is covering most of that straw. And it's not like we're going to have a major shortage of straw, so I'm not too concerned about this. Not overly concerned that this is going to be a problem. We're going to get a field full of bales off of here. That's our first thing that we're going to do, is we're going to get a field full of bales. Once we've got our field full of bales... The next thing that I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to do one more thing here. That one's going to go around that corner. And you notice it is leaving quite a bit behind. And that's where the rake sort of drifted, that the, where the, the rake sort of moved in on the corners. And there is nothing whatsoever that we can do about that, I don't think. Even if I was to go back over and rake again, I don't think there's anything we can do about that. So that's just something that we're going to have to leave. And I can see that the grass down over there is at 77% currently as it goes around that field. Um, so I'm going to go into here and I'm going to change the settings on this one to 15k on the corners. So that it goes a little bit faster as it goes around the corners. Instead of the 20k that it's currently reduced to. And... That one should do an absolutely magnificent job, I think. I think that is going to do a wonderful job going around those corners and sort of keeping that going. Yes, the huge bulky areas of straw right here because of the large rake that we use is a little bit of a problem. And it doesn't matter if we're doing it like this or if we're picking up loose straw. That's one thing that I did want to find out is if we can use loose straw into the cattle pens. Now, I believe we can. As far as I know, we can pick up loose straw and we can put it into the cattle pens. Now, what I don't know is do I have any storage for loose straw? We've got silos here and I've got a hay loft which will straw, uh, store straw and hay. It will store both but only a quarter of a million litres, which is not really enough. Not for us. We, we want a, a larger quantity than that. Farm silo right there does indeed store. That's a half a million. 
this one here. So that, that one there is actually pretty good. And if we were to adjust that one, we could have that even bigger. I've got a placeable there and a placeable. That one there takes everything, including straw. And that one is a similar quantity to that silo there. Then we've got that one, an extension. That one there, an extension, which we could put down and... Silo extension multi fruits placeable, which goes with that one. It doesn't go with the farm silo over here. So these here, we can use that as straw storage. Doesn't look particularly realistic, and it definitely does have that against it. That is definitely a downside to it. West Steel silo extension, 1 million litres. Okay, that's pretty good. That's not the one that we've got, though, is it? No, which one have we got? Silo, I've got that silo extension right there is the one that I've got. And we could get... So we could store loose straw. Only, though, if we can actually use... Oh! Okay, even the rake didn't work properly going around that corner. Right, well, that's not very good. We're definitely going to need to get rid of a piece of that field around there so that we can do the harvest properly. I think all we really need to do is just, like, eliminate some of it as field. Um, rather than worrying about trying to level it all out or anything like that. It's just where it sort of curves down towards the road seems to be the biggest issue. And this up here, what I'm hoping with this bit is that we will go round here. This is picking up quite a big lot of straw here as well. That's doing all right. We'll let this one, once this one has gone round again, that'll be two outside rounds, and it should just stop then. And then what we will do is we'll go through, we'll pick up all of the bales that are on the ground with a trailer, and then we will come back to it, and we'll let this one carry on with the land work, picking up all the rest of the straw. And then that will be everything all done, and everything will be wonderful and tickety-boo. So you can stay there, you can keep going. This one down here, what have we got at the moment? You are... Coming out and heading off to tip out once more. That is brilliant. Absolutely fanschmastic. That is awesome news. So you are going off and doing that. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to leave that one running. I'm, I'm absolutely delighted with that. You right here. We're going to get you over to the field so that you are ready to roll for our next harvest. It's not ripe yet. We've got to wait for that one. Um... So we'll bring this one out round and get that one up into the field. That's then ready to go. I've got quite a lot of stuff that's like ready to go now. We, 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 it, everything's coming together as well. So yes, again, course play definitely does have this bonus in that I can put things like the baling and gathering of the hay and everything. And that keeps everything moving. And I have no doubt that if I was to... Yep. At the moment, I'm really enjoying doing this series. This series as a whole, I'm really, really enjoying making this series and doing it. And I'm hoping that it's reasonably interesting for you. I know that if I've got to sit and do all the bailing manually myself, it is going to get extremely tedious for people to watch. You know, after a while, it sort of gets a bit sort of, I don't really want to watch this anymore. And so everybody will drift away. But if I keep using cosplay and setting up cosplay stuff... Is this going to keep it more interesting for you? Is that what you want to see? Now, one thing that I have noticed with cosplay, uh, well, what I was told with the way that it goes over and it tips and everything, is that you've got to be able to see the start point of the course from every point of the field. So this field here, this L-shaped field, if we look at this one, that one goes around there. Let's, um... There, look, see? This L-shaped field here. About the only place that we could start a course from this field and all of it actually be seen is from up here on a road. Right, if we were to start the course from up there and say come down the road maybe and come in and, and go around and tip. We'd have to, yeah, it comes in and tips over there, doesn't it? Uh, come in around there and tip. That might be the only way really that we could do that. Um... I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll wait and see, because that's going to stay as a grass field anyway, so it doesn't really matter. This field here, we are changing this one over. We're going to put the two cattle pens out here, but we've got to be able to afford them before we can actually buy them. And we have no money right now, so that's a slightly going against us, the, the fact that we've run out of money. Um, if we can get some more loan, then maybe we'll try that. But we've got a, 
boatload of grain that we can sell later in the winter, so we might be able to use that. And the cows aren't ready to give birth yet. None of them are. So that's really in our favor as well. Um, if we take a look at the cows right here. We're not interested in the chickens. Chickens are doing just fine right there. Uh, we have a look at these. We've got 2.3 years old. We've got half a year for some of the cows for giving birth. Now, what I don't know is, are the new animals going to be just calves that are going to come in? And we fatten them up for selling for beef? Or are we able to keep them and let them uh, grow on to be replacements for some of the dairy cows. Not sure about that. That's something that we will have to look at and investigate as time goes on. Um, yeah, we've got that bit there. And then pigs is another thing. And I've been reading up a little bit on how pigs work in seasons. And you've got a couple of different varieties. We know that we've got uh, four different varieties of pigs, right? And I think it's four. There's two different ways. Yes, it's four. So we've got two different ways that we do this. You've got the Yorkshire, which is a female pig. You've got the Gloucester Old Spot, which is 0.2 years old. And that one's 200 euros. And then you've got the Spotted, which is a female, and that's uh, 600 euros. And you've got the Berkshire over here, which is 278 euros. And that is male, and it's 0.2 years old. The way they've done this is that you've got different types of pig units, right? Some of them you own sows, and they give birth to piglets, and then you fatten those piglets up to a set size, a set weight, and then you sell them. And it's about six months old, I think. Uh, so 0. 0.6 years. These other types of um, pig units, they don't have any sows at all. They don't breed their own. They buy them in at a month or two old, like this. Uh, they've been Once they've been weaned, they buy them in as soon as they've been weaned. So they buy in weaner piglets, and then they fatten them up, and then they sell them again. And that's it. They say just buy in the weaners, and they fatten them up. I would like to run sows. I don't really want to be constantly buying in weaners in order to fatten them and sell them. I would rather just do a single sort of operation. So that's what I'd like to do with the pigs. Um, it is kind of recommended that you take a bit of time to... Hang on, I want to go over to the tractor. We're just coming up to the end of this run right here. Um, it's... They do say that you can, like, move the different aged pigs around at uh, different points. Um, so that you can sort of simulate how things actually happen in a real piggery. But I probably won't do that. We'll probably just leave them as they are. I'm not quite sure yet. Uh, that remains to be seen. Right, I'm going to do that. And I'm going to drop that one down there because I want to just at least get that little bit of straw that's right there on that corner. Otherwise it's going to bug me. That big long lie. I know there's bits of straw all over the place that we haven't actually picked up. Down, Big downside to using cosplay. However, big plus side to using cosplay is that we're able to pick it all up in the first place okay we, we, we've gathered all of this up and we've not had any issues all right so that's the big plus side to course play now next the thing that i want to do is i want to clear that straw off of the field and we've got only one option for clearing straw off the field at the moment because i don't have or do i i can't remember did i buy a trailer a flatbed trailer for the lorry don't think I did. No. No, because that one over there, that's the animal trade. No, I haven't got a flatbed trailer for the lorry. So we either need to go and buy a flatbed trailer for the lorry and do it like that. Or we use the tractor trailer over there and we do it like that. I'm thinking the tractor trailer. However, getting it and storing it in shed is going to be a little bit tricky. We're not going to have much room for it. I think what we're going to need to do is... Either we need more sheds, or we just got to find some alternative storage arrangements for some of the machines that we've got here. And I'm thinking alternative storage arrangements are our best option. So we're going to do that. This one's going to have alternative storage arrangements. And I've actually got an alternative storage right there. Because I've been using these sheds here for the articulated tractors. So this one here is going to go in instead of that one. And we'll just have to move it out if we want the seed 
bucket thing again. So that one can go there, and he's out of the way now. And then I'm going to go with this one. And this trailer, we're most likely going to keep this trailer. And we're going to... No, actually, no, I don't want you at all. Wrong one. I didn't mean to do that. Okay, so I'm going to need a tractor that can go reasonably fast. And I'm thinking, really, that would be the Zeria. Now, this is our mower tractor, and it's supposed to be only for mowing. But the other tractors are actually... That one's... Oh, actually, no, that was a 22. Is, is there a... Does it go faster than that? Oh. Right, course play has slowed down its maximum speed. So there, it does go up to 70k. Whereas the other tractors... This one's 63. This one's 40. Uh, yeah. Uh, right, 40. Uh, track No, you don't matter. There we go. Right, 43k... It is higher than 13k. Not, you don't count. 40k, that one. No, this is high as it will go. So, yeah, it's the Zerian that we're going to want. We're definitely going to want the Zerian. You over here are doing a wonderful job going up and down the rows. Every other row it's going to do, it's going to go right the way through. And then it will go back through and do every other row once more. The only thing is it does pick up the reel at the end of each row. See, it's picking up the reel right there, which means that even though it does go across some of these um, bits of grass here, it's not actually picking them up. It's not doing anything with them, which is a little bit of a shame. I'd like it to actually go over and pick those up. But, I mean, it, again, it's, it's only small quantity, so it doesn't really matter. He's doing just fine. We're going to leave him to it. So I am after that one. I will go and drop the mower off in the shed and then we'll put that one onto that trailer right there and we will run round and we will go and get those bales of straw. We want to bring them back here and we're going to put them into our shed. It's going to really test my reversing skills and this is probably, almost definitely certainly, going to be maybe the only time that we're going to be doing bales of straw. I would like to do loose so long as we can put bedding into the animals using loose straw. And that's something that we need to test. I need to be able to check that. So I'll just bring you up to there and lower you down like that and do that. I don't need a front weight on it for doing this job. So we'll be alright just pulling. I mean a front weight might help but I'm thinking about this. Front weight isn't going to be very much benefit on this. Now, if we had the load pressing down on the rear wheels, then yes, a front weight would be more beneficial. And a front weight could help a bit, um, giving us some additional traction with four-wheel drive, especially if we're trying to go uphill with a turntable trailer. Because that's got no weight pushing down on the tractor. It's just pulling behind us. Um, and that can be a little bit detrimental. But considering the overall weight of this trailer compared to the weight and power of this tractor... I do not foresee any kind of issues whatsoever with um, traction or anything like that. So weighing it all up, I think a front weight is an unnecessary addition. Now I'll bring you up here and we need, we're going to have to do a couple rounds on the field, I think, to be able to get these bales. And then we're going to have quite a lot more bales. How many bales have we got at the moment? So I want to go into here. 64 bales already. So there's two loads on the trailer and a bit, and a bit besides as well. Um... We'll go down this... I'm going to go over there, and I'm going to get a few of those bales over there. And then I'm going to run up and... I'm going to run down this side so that we can put the baler going already. Get that one started. I've got one bale of hay over there. Um, testing of the straw feeding into the cows for bedding. That's something that I want to do. I know that you, can, you can't put a... You can't drop a bale in front in order to do it. How could we test very quickly whether we can put straw straight in? There is one way that we could do that. Not with you. No. Have I got anything here that I can do a very fast... I've, I've got this one. And as he's empty... Stop driver. As he's empty, we're going to bring this one up and we're going to see if... Because you don't have to put straw in for bedding for the cows. You absolutely don't need to do that. And we could leave it so that we're not having to deal with any manure. We've only got slurry. 
right? You've you've got it. You've actually got a choice between the two. But uh, I'm not I'm not too concerned about that. Right. So I'll just pick up a little bit right there. I've got 1,500 liters of straw in here. That's all I'm going to pick. I'm not going to pick up anything more than that. We're going to run you down here. Maybe a little bit too fast, just going through there. But I'm 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 happy with how it's it's panned out. So the cows. I'm not actually too concerned about them. Yes, it'd probably be pretty cool to be able to start using some other bits for them. But it's the horses. Can I put loose straw in for the horses? I know that there is the straw blower thing that you ideally want to put in for the horses. And if we go and have a look at them, they don't actually have any... Actually, I just want to go into here, don't I? If we go and have a look at the horses... Uh, we've got water, oats, and hay. Straw doesn't seem to give them anything, although they're all in the 80-70% mark. So maybe we should be putting straw in. So that's what I want to see if we can just dump loose straw in for the horses and whether that actually benefits them. Because if it does, then excellent. Yeah, we'll do that. And I haven't forgotten that I need to sell all of these horses and we'll buy in some more. So there, I can... Right, that's brilliant. I can tip straw in there for the horses. And if I look in here, we've now got straw in there for horses. And that's, that's absolutely brilliant. So we can do that. We can tip straw straight in for the horses. We can do it loose from one of these. I'm assuming from a feeder wagon as well will work equally as well. Uh, so we know that we can do that. We'll just test the cows a minute. This means that we're not going to actually need to use bales. Right, we're not going to be needing to use bales. And that dropped in there as well. So now our cows, look in here, they've got a little bit of straw, which means that they will produce a little tiny bit. We've got 600,000 litres of slurry in here. No manure at the moment, no milk, because we haven't had any of them give birth to any calves yet. Uh, but yeah, it, it's coming along quite nicely. And if I look in here, doesn't... Tell me, when I go up here like this, how much I've got in that tank as, like, an overall quantity? It doesn't tell me here either. So I don't know what the upper limit is for slurry and manure in those fields. I'm assuming that there is an upper limit. I just don't know what that upper limit is. Let me get around that corner there. Right. Right. I'll take this one back out to the field, and hopefully we've got the two combined courses on there. There shouldn't be any changes or anything different going on. I should just be able to go straight out to the field, find the point where it left off, put this one on to that point, and then say carry on, and he should just keep going with it. There it is. I see it. It's up over there. We come drifting around this corner. We want to just drive up to that point, and in theory, he should just keep going with that bit right there without making any changes. So we know that we can use straw, so we'll be able to, after the next combining, we'll be able to just go straight over the fields following the combine, or we can send a rake over first and do it like that, uh, one or the other. So I'm going to go there, nearest waypoint, drive course, and he's away. And... He's going to go on down to the bottom down there and go on that. Okay, that's good. He's going that, and we've run our tests all the way through. I'm quite pleased with those. We have established that everything works properly. We'll have a look at you. You have got large square bales. So I will start that one up like that. I've just pressed U to start that one up. And then I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to get these bales here. And then I'm going to head down in a straight line. Down the field, down that way, and gather up those bales down through there. And we can only take 24 bales at a time, so I may have to take one load. Well, that's about all we've got time for in today's episode. So we're going to go and take a little bit of a break. We need to chill out on the beach, relax, and build up some strength. So while we're doing that... If you've enjoyed the episode, then could you please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.